Well, I'm not going to say that it's a waste of time to learn Plasma Spark, because, I mean, I'm making a tutorial about it, so that would probably be even more of a waste of time, but I definitely feel like learning Plasma Spark has improved my ledge grabs as well as my ability to optimize my movement in other rooms and it has made other strats sort of pale in comparison to how difficult it is so I guess it makes other parts of the game seemingly easier um, the main thing is when you come out of Dragon's area you're gonna be hopefully getting blue suit with the reverse full happy and that should put you somewhere in the range of 100 health or less um, if you had the right amount of health going out of there you want to have around 90 health to do plasma spark if you're any lower than that you risk taking damage from the pirates in the plasma room and that could be potentially catastrophic so one of the first things I like to do for setting up this is landing on the floor in this room on this side of the door to make sure that I land prior toward going into this room, prior to going into this room. If I am in the air when I go in that door, like if I did something like this, it's going to really mess me up um, for when I have to press down and stuff. So I like to make sure that I land here. It gives me an opportunity to get as much run speed as possible so that I can get blue suit a bit earlier and be able to predict when I can press down for my charge for the spark. So, the first difficult part of this trick was learning the charge and the first jump and ledge grab combo. Now what I'm doing here is I'm holding forward and then angling towards down and forward at these two plants right here. Um, either around them or slightly after them, preferably. So, once I angle downwards, I'll kind of do that slight crouch, and then I move backwards, or I move back to left. So I'm holding left, down and left, and then left again. Once I press left again, I press jump immediately. And pressing jump while holding left will ensure that you will do a spin jump there. You can do the trick with doing a straight jump, but it puts you at a much higher risk for sparking. So, it's rock towards down and left, and then back to left again, and then jump, and then immediately when I press jump, I release left, and I go across the D-pad without touching it at all, and then I press right after pressing jump. So it's, it's like left jump, left jump, right, and I make sure to not hit up at all because if you press up this is what will happen if you just try to glide across the d-pad 90 percent of the time you're going to spark up by mistake so you need to make sure you release in between your left and right inputs so that you don't spark up so rock Let's see pressed up by mistake Rock towards down and left, and then you jump up and press right. That little move there took me quite a while to learn to get it consistent. Um, so practice that over and over again at first, just getting that down. Um, the next ledge grab is much easier. It's just ledge grabbing onto this ledge right here with a little bit of run speed, like that. And you can land there, and the next step is running up until about this point right here. 
And the reason you do that is if you notice when I start here, Samus will run forward and her momentum will start to get eaten by the angle of this hill. If you run into that angle and get that momentum eaten, when you jump, you will get your momentum back and you'll be going fast. So what you want to do is eat your momentum to the point where you're about to do that little... You see that hiccup that happens there? Hiccup. Sometimes you go fast, sometimes you hiccup. Hiccup. You want to do it about, like, at where this... See this really high angle here? And then there's a, a smaller angle right here. And then an even small, or even lower angle. Higher, highest. You want to do it at, like, the seam of the highest angle and then it'll let you get over there now the next step is doing your space jumps and those are up to personal preference you can either do three jump inputs or two jump inputs I tend to do two jump inputs because when I slowed down the video and I looked at how many frames it took me to release jump and repress it three times I was wasting time in the in um, not holding jump when I could have been by releasing it too much if you look at the background you can see how it kind of pauses every time you release jump you've got two pauses with the three jump method and you've only got one in midair with the two jump method and I tend to get more frames remaining with the two jump method than I do with the three jump method. So take that however you will. So the next difficult part of the trick after getting past those jumps is making it past this fish right here. He's going to be closing in on this wall that I'm wall jumping off of. He's going to be about there. <laughs> when you make it past him, and it's going to be really tight. And that's a really good indication of whether or not you're going fast enough in the beginning to even get the trick at all. So, beating the fish is a great indication of whether or not you're going to get the trick. Now, these ledges have something interesting, and it kind of shows some inaccuracies in the hitbox world in Super Metroid here. This ledge has a very slight invisible corner. And you can see that s the ball right now is kind of suspended over the actual ground sprite. This ledge, the hitbox is actually inside of the ground sprite a little bit, and it gets fixed as you get to this angle. You can see Samus is more on top of it. You're kind of in it there. So take a look at this set of this set of angles here I was talking about with the uh, the momentum jump earlier. We've got the highest angle towards the bottom, the lowest angle here. Well, maybe not the highest. You've got a high angle at the bottom, lowest angle, another high angle like the bottom, and then the highest angle at the top, and then a slightly lower angle again. If you go up to this one, it's the same thing. You've got highest angle at the top, slightly less high lowest and then the slightly less high again at the bottom remember how down here I could go inside of the slightly less high this one watch what happens when I try to go into the slightly less high area the hitbox is absurdly in the middle of nowhere it's like this corner sort of thing and you really have to just get used to it you have to jump higher than the ledge appears to be by quite a bit to be able to get there and um it's really frustrating at first because it's it just doesn't really make much sense so you really have got to practice that a lot to get over that that weird ledge so, once you've got your space jumps down, and you start ledge grabbing that ledge, the next step is finding out where to spark. 
So this brings me to the final point of the trick, which is where to spark from when you finally get to the point where you're getting up here with frames remaining on your spark timer. So I have found that this is the closest you can be to the wall. If you notice above me, there is these two rows or columns rather of lighter vines and then right in the center of them they're divided by this slightly darker line and it's if you look at samus's gun you can see me tracing that line with the like kind of center slash left edge of the gun that's basically the point at which you can spark if you're there or later you can get the spark if you try to do it any earlier, you won't get the spark. So right there it works. If I turn right, which is just a one pixel shift to the right, I'm pretty sure. I'm not sure how many pixels it shifts you. Um, you can't get it. So you need to be there or later. Um, I've gotten it like way over here before. So there's some variability in the success levels of the trick. That pretty much wraps it up, and if you guys have any further questions or anything I could answer, let me know. Otherwise, good luck, and hopefully you don't need to see a therapist after learning this trick. <laughs>